Me now is Democratic Senator Jeff Merkley of Oregon, the only sitting senator to endorse Bernie Sanders. And of course, Oregon went to Sanders last night. So they split last night. She had a squeaker in Kentucky. He won Oregon. Thank you very much, Senator, for being with us today. Well, it was quite an amazing win in Oregon because the Indeed. only public poll was that uh, Hillary Clinton would win it by 13 percent. Bernie won by almost 10 percent. And at last count, uh, I saw the numbers, uh, took 35 of 36 counties and lost the 36 by one vote by one vote. And so it was quite a dramatic turnaround from what the, uh, the, the one public poll had predicted. Well, what do you say to Debbie Wasserman Schultz about her concerns about Nevada and to Becerra who says he's running as a Democrat and th those are the rules and you, you know once the, the umpire has ruled uh, you got to abide by that. Well, certainly the, the situation is one where the, the comments made by folks there, the phone messages they left, uh, the antagonism, uh, that was out of place. And Bernie was very quick to condemn it. Uh, his campaign manager went on national television and said it's absolutely unacceptable. And we all feel that way. This, this was an anomaly in a, in a long journey. And uh, certainly you didn't see any of that in Oregon last night. You didn't see any of that in, in um, uh, Kentucky. And that is because Bernie Sanders' campaign is a campaign about the big challenges we face. And by the way, when he spoke in Oregon at a rally, a peace dove came down and landed on his podium. So even the animal kingdom is, is recognizing uh, the strength of his ideas. And it's not, it's not about uh, uh, creating a ruckus. It's about reforming a system where the economy is seriously failing nine out of ten Americans. And, and certainly the role of campaign cash in that and the inability because that came past for us to take on this big issue of, of global warming. So big, bold challenges facing our nation, uh, facing our world, and we've got to take them on aggressively. Now, when you look at the math, the math shows that she has an overall lead of pledge delegates of 274. And when you count the superdelegates, she only has to win 10% of the remaining delegates at stake to reach the magic number. He has to win 90% of the remaining delegates. So isn't it time to, even if he's surely going to continue through California, and I hope through the District of Columbia, because people here like to vote, too, here in Washington, but isn't it time to dial back the rhetoric and change the well, tone? Well, it's not time to dial back the conversation about these, these big challenges and the urgency of, of taking them on. Uh, we have now, the last four decades, essentially 100% of the new income has gone to the top 10%, which means that 9 out of 10 Americans have been losing out. They know the economy is rigged, and they know the political system is rigged. And it's important for folks in Oregon last night, and certainly in the Dakotas coming up, and New Jersey, and New Mexico, and California, to be able to to weigh in, express their frustration. Uh, and by that, I mean vote. Vote. Weigh in at the ballot place. That's the way it's done. And to carry that message forward so that we can move the spectrum of conversation in America to having a set of policies that really do tackle these big issues and just aren't about small little adjustments. College, but, a financial gauntlet in America. And why do the young in Oregon, the one poll we had in Oregon, Three out of four folks under 45 wait in for Bernie, even though he was losing in the overall poll. It sends but, a message that we're, we're really off track. But, Senator, uh, no question about that. I don't think anyone's arguing that he should uh, pull out or withdraw before the poll. Like, I've never heard anyone from the Clinton campaign even suggest that. The question is, what he was saying last night was not just through June 14th. He was saying it on to Philadelphia, and he was really vowing a, a big battle, saying the system is rigged and, um, you know, really challenging the Democratic Party. Do you think that that is helpful, given what you all as Democrats face against the Republican presumptive nominee, Donald Trump. Uh, I personally believe that, that after everyone has weighed in, the candidate who has the majority of the vote, the candidate who has the majority of the pledged delegates, that we're going to bring the two sides together around that candidate. And that is when we're going to be shoulder to shoulder going into the convention. I'm sure there'll be some discussions over what platform planks will be voted on or what rules might be changed for the future. I mean, personally, in my town halls, and I have a lot of them, I've had 21 over the last few months, people come in and they say, what's this whole soup? 
super delegate thing. Don't you have enough influence just because of the office you hold? And I, I think they're absolutely right. For the next campaign, I hope we eliminate these these super delegates. They aren't they don't fit well with what our party is all about. They don't fit well with with the sense that we should be a we the people and restore the we the people vision of our of our of our constitution. So we'll have those arguments, but they'll be in the context of making our party even better and being united going into the election. Senator, Donald Trump tweeted today, Bernie Sanders is being treated very badly by the Democrats. The system is rigged against him. Many of his disenfranchised fans are for me. Isn't Bernie Sanders and the rhetoric and the anger that's been engendered, you heard his fans, his supporters booing the DNC. Isn't that going to help Donald Trump? This is a, a Trump fantasy. Uh, Bernie Sanders uh, entered this campaign having no intention of this being a reap of what happened with Ralph Nader running on a third party where essentially the, the election was handed to Bush and Bush basically uh, made so many deeply destructive decisions for our country, including taking us into war on false pretenses. There's no way that's going to happen. Bernie Sanders has been very clear. He has said his priority will be to ensure that Donald Trump never enters the White House as a president of the United States of America. Will you help persuade him of that if, if some mediation is needed between the two camps? Well, given how aggressively he's asserted it, I'm not sure I'm going to need to persuade him of it. But I certainly hope to uh, help build the bridge because this bridge is so important. It it's, is very important for the DNC uh, to make sure the convention is run in a fair manner, that proposals that have significant support get a chance to be considered and, and voted on, because that is the way you bring the sides together. You make both sides feel responsible. Respected and honored, realize that, that both uh, the uh, Secretary Clinton's camp and uh, Bernie Sanders' team have brought an enormous amount of energy to this dialogue. We have to capture that energy, that grassroots energy, to take it into this election. Anything else would be a, a, a terrible travesty. Senator Jeff Merkley from Oregon, thank you very much. Thanks for You're being welcome. with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.